throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Cousins from the gun on third. And this is going to be incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. The second-year quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky, bringing out the Chicago Bears. In his rookie campaign, Trubisky, seven touchdowns, seven interceptions. But kind of like Jared Goff before him, CD, that sophomore leap has been made, has it not? It certainly has, and give a lot of credit to Chicago Bears administration, to their general manager, bringing in Matt Nagy as the head coach, bringing in a new offensive coordinator to build around Mitchell Trubisky and elevate his game. He might even quadruple the number of touchdown passes from 2017 to 2018, and his interception rate, it has gone down. The Chicago Bears offense has a lot of promise moving forward. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. scrimmage and he goes down right there call it no gain on the play and it'll be second down and this whole line it is the lifeblood of the offense they establish the tone mean nasty physical they can't wait to get after people that allows the rest of the offense to feel confident Second down, here's Trubisky. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A very solid gain of 27. But when you hit him on the move like that, he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam. Oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 as they're down to the 29-yard line. From the shotgun is Trubisky. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. And a look at the Vikings' defensive unit. Let's take a good, strong look at Linval Joseph, the defensive tackle. I'm telling you, the spotlight you need for him has to be large because he holds down the middle of the defensive line as well as anyone in the league. And what I loved about him, the offseason, took a trip with the Vikings to, is it to Iceland? Yeah, Iceland, yeah, that's right. To connect with the Viking heritage. Skull, Linval. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. This is Howard on second down. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? On 
third down. Trubisky steps away to his left. He may try and run for this. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Someone knew exactly where he needed to get to pick up that first down now. I'm not so sure about the technique in getting there, but he went for it, and he got it. Exactly. He knew where he needed to get, because remember, if he slides, when that derriere dips, if you will, that plays over. The derriere dips, I like that one. Yeah, been working on it for a little bit. A first trip to the red zone for the Bears. They've got a first and 10 at the 17. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. Flushed out right. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Another nice gain. 16 yards there and a first down again. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you got to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. throw it with Trubisky and he is going to go down he will be sacked on the final play of this first quarter so an even first quarter on the scoreboard but the threat of points on the horizon nothing nothing our score EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis back with you as it's Bears football here to begin quarter number two. And they'll come up looking to keep this drive moving. Back at the two now, here's second and goal. it in with Howard and he'll get into the end zone touchdown Chicago Jordan Howard taking it in from two yards out and the Bears are in for six solid job up front really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in that was well executed wasn't it well blocked well run end result six points touchdown Cody Parkey is on now for the point after. Parkey adds the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. That time, a nine-play drive. And finishing it off with a touchdown run was Jordan Howard. now set to kick it away that'll be taken in the end zone and no run back here this will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25 yard line the Vikings making their way out and let's take this time to talk about the Vikings club championship of Madden it was held in mid-December and your winner 
I.B. Straffin or is it I.B. Strafin? You've got the pronunciation guide. I.B. Strafin. Strafin. My bad, Mr. Strafin. Whichever you prefer, but defeating newcomer Jay Wolfman, he'll represent the Vikings in the league-wide club championship event in early February that has a $700,000 prize pool. I just want you to know I heard from I.B. Strafin's people. It is not whichever you prefer. It's I.B. Strafin. Well, I guess I should probably correct it. It might be Jay Wolfman, not Wolfman, like I said. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Well, the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. They keep it on the ground, but this time it's Murray. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And it's going to be third down and a ways to go here. Third and 14. Boy, C.D. Mack, just from day one, he's looked so good in a Bears uniform, <laughs> literally and figuratively. And some Raiders fans watching this saying, oh, I wish we had him on our team. Yeah, just about every Raiders fan saying, he looked a lot better in silver and black. Why don't we still have him? But in Chicago, immediately comfortable, fit right into their defensive scheme. They said, go get the passer, and that's exactly what he's done. Leonard Floyd, another first-round pick coming from the other side. He has really helped Chicago get off to a great start, and they love how he disrupts teams' offenses. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. Here's Matt Weil now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Taken in at the 22. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15, and the Bears take over. The NFC North champion Chicago Bears, they take the field here again on offense. Their first division title this year since 2010. They clinched it back in week 15 with that victory over Green Bay. Of course, Green Bay's had their number, especially in recent years. But what a season it's been for Chicago. And when you think about their previous four years, 5-11, 6-10, 3-13, and 5-11 and and again in 2017. Now they'll have at least one home game in Soldier Field in January. This is a big turnaround. But I'd say go ahead and engrave the Coach of the Year award to Matt Nagy, their head coach. And it also will seal hirings going forward. Sean McVay with the Rams in 2017. Matt Nagy with the Bears in 2018. Look for those offensive guys to get the first crack at these jobs. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Trubisky with a give to Howard and yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Tackle made by Eric Kendricks. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Here's Trubisky to throw. Incomplete. He had his hands on it, but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. That's really nice coverage there. I'm not sure he would have gotten to the first down marker anyway. But boy, oh boy, did they blanket him. Yeah, short throw, but he really didn't have many options. Had to force it in. Well, he didn't have to, but he chose to force it in somewhere. Incomplete. Yeah, now it brings up fourth down. O'Donnell, he's on to punt as he gets this one away. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line.
Minnesota's football here in just a second. And you think about the season that the Vikings have had. Maybe not the kind of year that folks had envisioned for the Vikings. You thought maybe this could be an 11, 12, maybe even a 13-win season if all fell in place. But that has not been the case. That is so true because we thought with the acquisition of Kirk Cousins, that would take care of everything on offense. The defense won the best in the league in 2017. No reason to think that that wouldn't continue. They've still been one of the top units out there. But if they make the playoffs and they play as they did against Miami in week 15, especially on offense when they ran the ball for 198 yards, look out. Because then the Vikings could be dangerous. Can you imagine if they went to Dallas and mm. took them on on the road? Imagine that physical clash. And if they emerged out of that one, who knows? First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. On second down, Cook. And he's going to be taken down shy of the five-yard line. Two yards gets him back to where they started, but now third and ten. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. The Vikings on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. A give. This is Cook. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively. And it likely forces a punt situation on fourth. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense. Linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Here's Matt Wild now, as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And he's able to get it out of there, and this is a pretty good kick. And take it right at the 35. A good return there, 17 yards. And it'll be a short field for the Bears as they take over first and 10. The Bears offense now gets set to head back onto the field. They're out in front last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. On first down, they run with Howard. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be second and 11. Fans, a reminder, I have a note card here that says ad-lib halftime preview. So I guess let's do just that as we'll hand things over to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando when this one reaches halftime. Did I do okay? You did great. Not a bad job. Hey. But, you know, writing down your ad -libs. If you print it, I'm going to read it. <laughs> I'm Brandon Gauden. On second down, Trubisky. And now he'll tuck it in run. And so now Trubisky lost the football. And this belongs to the Vikings. When I see a play like that, I come back to risk reward. I don't know about you, but is it worth it at that point, whatever you're going to pick up, to either take the hit, and in this case, lose the football. So should have gone down. I mean, hindsight's always 20-20, but that's the safe play. You're exactly right. Hindsight's really never wrong, is it? Because you can analyze it, but I think ultimately you got to look at it as a first option, taking care of the ball, getting what you can, and that's it. Don't worry about it anymore. Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and 10. Cousins now after the fumble recovery. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Call it a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll make this a second down. From the gun, here's Cousins. 
And the pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. Leonard Floyd in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Now we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Cousins with work to do after the sack as he brings his guys up on a third and long. Now a give. This is Murray. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Now the Bears electing to call a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup and get set as we resume action. Here's Matt Weil now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Back out onto the field comes Allen Robinson. Second quarter, a guy like him, no catches, so that's the surprising part, but they're winning, so maybe they've been able to do some other things effectively, I guess. And they found other ways, haven't they? Because the receivers will tell you, offense needs to run through us, but they're managing to get it done in this ball game without having to actually do that. I wouldn't expect them to stay silent for the rest of the game. Yeah, yeah you got to think that his first catch is coming at some point. Right and now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. Eric Kendricks in on the tackle. But at least he was able to break that initial contact or it could have been a loss. Yeah, give credit to the defensive player, though. What did he do? Made him slow down, slow up his feet, and allowed the rest of the guys to get there to finish him off. The rush defense stout on first down. Here's second and 10 from the 20. Now Trubisky to throw on second. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 25. And he is not White going to make it all the way in. They'll mark him down right about the one-yard line. That late in the clock, second quarter, why not just run it a time or two and get it into the locker room? What you're saying makes absolutely perfect sense. Run it and get out of there. But I'm just wondering if the pressure of today's NFL and the high-powered offenses that you're facing may have forced them into saying, let's try and get some more points. Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Following the interception, Cousins. And Thielen's got it. Touchdown, Vikings. Adam Thielen as the first half is winding down. And the Vikings are an extra point away from tying this thing up. And a little time left on the clock, so on the other side, they're thinking, gosh, we'd like to get that lead right back. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Here I am <laughs> going ahead and tapping out the first half. Well, There's still time. Way. They've got to make a decision about what they want to do on the kickoff, whether they want to let their return guy touch it. Dan Bailey now for the extra point. Bailey got the extra point, and that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. A nice, tidy little drive there, getting the ball in excellent field position, and only one play to score it. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This is fielded at the goal line. 
And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shot at the 23-yard line. Showing just 16 seconds till the half as they line up first and 10. They'll begin the drive with Howard. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Just a yard on the pick up there and it'll bring up a second and nine. So thanks to the late touchdown, it's a time ball game here heading to break. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. But they're all even to this point. So to see if either side can pull away, let's get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the start of the second half. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Set and ready to go for the second half. One touchdown apiece, 7-7 seven, seven our score. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. So here's the Bears offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. Now Trubisky on first down. Stepping up. He's going to keep it. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in, but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. They go play action here on first down. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Emerson Griffin in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Well, they were coming out of the 4-3 defensively. Pressure coming off that right side from the DM. And that's the blind side of most quarterbacks. If you're right-handed, that's the side you don't see quite as well. And that's why you rely on your left tackle, maybe your highest-paid offensive lineman, to take care of you. In this situation, that didn't happen. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Give to Howard. And he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43. Nine yards on the gain there, so he got half of it back, and it'll be third down. Running lanes read a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Out of the gun, Trubisky flush to his right. He can run for it, and he will. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. Partner as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. So two first downs, and that moves the ball to the 42 now, first and 10. On the hand 
handoff. This is Howard. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Now it's Trubisky. Oh, and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Everson Griffin in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. We are seeing two really confident defenses imposing their will on these offenses in this game. Yeah, absolutely going toe for toe. Just curious if one of these offenses can wake up a little bit. Is there any way they can find something that can pop, something big to knock them back on their heels? Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. And the pressure gets to him again. Everson Griffin able to disrupt yet another pass play. His third sack of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. Holding offense. So they say no to the penalty. The incompletion stands. It'll be second and ten. And what they want to do is go ahead and take those downs away from them. You never want to give extra snaps to any offense. That's how you get hurt. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Following the penalty, it's Murray. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two. Now third down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. Cousins from his end zone on third down. And he's going to go down in the end zone. Cousins taken down for the safety. And Charles, at some point, you can't keep worrying about big play. Can this be perfect? You just have to get the ball out of the end zone. And in the offensive huddle, that was discussed when they called the play. Just get out of the end zone. But you know what's interesting? A lot of the times in the defensive huddle, they actually call a set and then say at the end of it, get a safety. So it's preached, it's coached, it's thought about. So a free kick situation forthcoming from the 20 as they'll punt this one away. This is taken around the 12.
But now the Bears coming out as they get ready. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession. That was punt the football because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing but control the game offensively. Put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. On first down, Trubisky. Eluding the pressure right. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. Well, that was man coverage. So once he decides to run with the football, there's no one to account for him, and he turns it into a nice gain. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and ten. They'll throw on first down with Trubisky, escaping the pressure right. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. I think the last two plays really illustrate how difficult it is to game plan against this guy because you know he can throw the football, but how about his use of legs as well? What we call those broken plays, you can't account for them. Yeah, those plays, those two that you just mentioned, a microcosm really of how he can hurt you. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They run with Howard. And an alley to run. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. Another nice gain, 16 yards there, and a first down again. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. It's been a good one so far. Just a two-point game here as we get set for quarter number four. So first and ten now from the 30. Here's the first carry for Trey Cohen. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. He lost two there, and it's third down. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring it up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, just stop them, get to the ball. That means it might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. The Bears on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and eight. From the gun, it's Trubisky. Dancing to his left. He may try and run for this. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Moving around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but it's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. They go counter with Howard. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. 
Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. Again, it's Howard. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Jordan Howard, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bears will extend their lead. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. Now an important extra point here to maybe salt this one away. Parkey with the extra point. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So that drive in total eight plays. And finishing it off with a touchdown run was Jordan Howard. Parkey now set to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. And last time they surrendered the safety, we know they don't want to do that again. That is just one of those oddities in scoring that we get. And it's just so strange to see that go up on the board. And then you got to make sure that that doesn't happen to your team again. They've got to take care of the ball. But boy, it juices up the defense. Oh, without a doubt. That's a great way to score some points. Now a play fake here on first down. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there. And that'll bring up second down. And that's what he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Line of scrimmage, again the 25, second and 10. On second down, Cousins again. Incomplete, almost intercepted. They haven't picked him off yet. Would have been a great time for the first, but instead it's third down. When you can count on one hand the number of completions you've had in a game and we're in the second half, that tells you it's really not been your day. Yeah, but you're losing. You can't just abandon the passing game altogether. Yeah, maybe can get hot, string a few together, and get rolling. The Vikings on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This is third and ten. Working out of the gun. Cousins. Middle of the field. It's Robinson. And he's able to get out to the 32. Brought down there. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Desperation time. Cousins on fourth down. That one into the hands of Thielen complete. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. You still have to get it done, as you noted, and they did. Cousins now five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. Oh, no, no. 
They'll throw again. Cousins. He'll find Thielen working the middle. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. A first down throw for Cousins. And that'll be incomplete. No grounding call there. He had a receiver near the right sideline. It was pretty clear there. He just needed to get rid of that one. And he did have a receiver in the area, but initially my view was obstructed, and I thought that was going to be grounding, but clearly the correct call made, and that is no call. Is that why you threw your play sheet down? Is that why you did Dude, it? Was that the flag? You can't be giving me up. I got a lot of <laughs> issues up here in the booth. Cousins. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long. And they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Here's Cousins. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Well, he'd been targeted quite a bit on this drive. And finally, I think the guys on the defensive side, they said no more. They slapped the double coverage on him, made it very tough for him to get the ball. All right, All right go. they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Bears are going to get the football back, and they're going to get it in great field position. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about Slim and none? Well, Slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. down to none? Yes, exactly right. The Bears offense now getting ready to take over. They're in a good spot. Two-possession game barely, but a two-possession game here late. Now they just have to put this game on ice. Let's face it. Right now, they're talking about ball security, taking care of it, not allowing anything crazy to happen because we've seen nutty things yeah, happen down have. the stretch. <laughs> but they also have the security of the scoreboard. With that type of a lead, even if something goes haywire, they're still in good shape. Now Howard. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Looky here, Trubisky wants to throw it. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Let's see what they draw up here. Third and long following the sack of Trubisky. Now it's 
It's Trubisky. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Picked up by the former first rounder, Trey Waynes. And the return here is stopped at the 35-yard line. Two-score game here in the fourth, and that pick, it kind of keeps the door ajar, doesn't it? It does, and you wonder about their strategy because with a two-score lead, you think maybe you're just sitting on it trying to drain some clock. It's almost like they felt like, hey, we've got a good cushion. We can keep pressing it. It ended up costing them. And now out comes Minnesota. They might be thinking this is close to a lost cause here. Got to play it out. What do they need to do? Well, they have a thought process in mind already, but they can't get ahead of themselves. They know that they need to score quickly. Yep, two-score game. Onside kick and get the ball back and then score again. But they can't worry about the last two points. <laughs> the only thing that matters is scoring quickly. Then they'll take it from there. Cousins to throw. It's incomplete. Took a shot. Couldn't connect. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball. And they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead. Fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Now Cousins. And he comes back with one complete. That catch good for five. It's third down. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And that is incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And Robinson with a big catch. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. Over the middle complete. It's Cook. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Give him eight on the play, and it'll make it a second down. And the spike comes now with just under 40 ticks left. The Vikings on third down. A pretty anemic, a very anemic, one for nine thus far. This time they face a third and two. To the air again, it's Cousins. It's caught on the right side by Robinson. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. At five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. So there's the spike as it comes with 23 seconds to go. Again, it's Cousins. And that one drops to the ground, incomplete. Clock stops here just inside of 20 seconds, 19 left. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a no chance at all. Way easier said than done. The Vikings on third down. Just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. This is third and 10. Cousins again. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. Eddie Jackson picks it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. 
obviously disappointing, but you had to go for broke here, down two scores. So that forced you to make some throws you definitely wouldn't want to make. But I think this interception is going to pretty much write an end to this one. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense as he'll stop it with 13 seconds left to play. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you prime the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. From Minneapolis, so long, everybody.